Hello, everyone. I'm Marge DiVigilio, a program manager at Greater Lynn Senior Services. Welcome to Seasoned and Smart. We have a very interesting show today, and I'm sure you're going to find it interesting. It's on hoarding. We have Lori Grant. Hello. Lori is our hoarding specialist. And um, welcome, Lori. Thank you. With all the TV shows and newspaper articles that we see today, people are hearing a lot about hoarding. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, it wasn't like that before, now it's coming out. How about giving us your definition of what, what's a hoarder? Well, a person who hoards, um, they have a problem acquiring too many things and problem discarding the things that they have. So what they do is they keep acquiring even though um, their house literally begins to fill up. Mm. And so the process of discarding is extremely difficult for them for many reasons. Um, it could be emotional attachment to items. It could be that that person sees the beauty in everyday things that they have. And so for them to get rid of it is just unthinkable um, for them. But hoarding um, becomes an issue. It's kind of interesting. So you can have a lot of stuff in your home and it's not a problem, but it only becomes a diagnosed um, definition of hoarding when it becomes a problem for someone else oh. or it's a safety or health issue. Sa safety or health, that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, or it's a financial strain. Mm -hmm. And so if you're acquiring and also acquiring debt, um, then it's a problem. Hoarding is a problem. Um, it's also considered a problem if it's a problem for someone else, such as a landlord mm -hmm. um, or Board of Health. Absolutely. Who gets involved in hoarding cases. How about the folks living with a hoarder? Oh. People living with someone who hoard, it, it can um, be frustrating, it can be overwhelming, but it can also be a safety hazard too because that person who lives with them could also fall or, or have an accident or get sick yep. from the accumulation right. of stuff. That's right. Yeah. Um, so it affects everybody around the hoarder. Everybody's affected. I know it's a very painful thing for families. I mean, uh, if you, the, you're a child of a hoarder, it's so frustrating because you, you, you cannot say, suggest things. Why don't we? Let's try this. How about this? Yeah. It's very hard for family members because where if you're not a person who hoards, you can look at an area and say, gosh, I could just go in there, clean that up in one day and it, yeah. it would be done. Why won't mom just let me do that? Exactly. But that's actually one of the worst things that you could do um, for a family member because time and time again, it's been shown and proven that can go in and clean it up, but that doesn't address the mental health issue no. of hoarding. And so for family members, it does get frustrating. It's very difficult. Um, I myself grew up in a home that was very cluttered mm -hmm. and from time to time bordered on the hoarding definition. And so that's why I got interested in hoarding um, was because I was that that daughter that was frustrated. You know how it feels. I know how it feels. And many, many fights um, were had between my brother and I and my mom about the condition of our house. Um, but it didn't do any help. It didn't, no, it it didn't help yeah, at all. That's it, that's right. And so a few years ago, I mean, we're lucky in Massachusetts actually to have some of the leading experts. Very lucky. In the field of research hoarding, uh, researching hoarding. and. Um, as we started to get more educated at, on hoarding as a mental illness, we started to understand how to approach someone who hoards. So a family member who is frustrated and up to here, mm. literally, oh with boy. stuff, um, should recognize that you do have to come to the um, family or friend with a gentle, non-judgmental approach. It's baby approach. steps. It's baby steps. It is. Yes, it's it really is. baby steps. Yes. And it's a process. It's a process, yep. And it's not going to, it didn't happen overnight and it's not going to be taken care, care of, of that's right. overnight. That's right. So if you still have 
a part of you that does care for and see um, see your parent or spouse or friend or neighbor mm -hmm. as the person that they truly are um, besides their clutter and stuff, then that really truly is the way to just help them slowly. With professionals and as, it's not, as yourself. Yes, and it's not a bad idea to not work with your own family. Exactly. <laughs> that can get um, sticky. It's, it's always good to bring professionals <laughs> it, in. It is a good idea to bring in And someone. we're so lucky here at Bradeland Senior Services now to have you, the worker, able to go out and see clients and work with clients in the community. I mean, that's what it's all about. And without professional help, I think it's really, it's a, it's a monumentous problem without professional help. We are. We are very fortunate at Greater Lynn Senior Services that the agency um, sees the value in having someone to start working Absolutely. with Absolutely. people who hoard. And I truly do believe that our model here um, will be replicated in other places. Oh, I'm sure it will be. I think we're going to have a video um, that we're going to show. It's going to be about three or four minutes, so take a look at the video. And then we'll come af uh, on afterwards and talk about what we've seen. Um, I think that'll be interesting for folks. Pack rats just pile things up because they want their space for themselves. So it's like they pile up everything around their space and they can get into where they want their space and nobody else can. My name is Chris Britt Montag and I am the daughter of a pack rat. I'm doing this project because when my father died, our house was so full of his collection, as we put it politely, that it was just completely traumatic for us to try to clean it up and organize everything. Not to mention how, how it was living with it before that, but particularly when he died, I think it was just shocking how much work it was. <laughs> and how, how much disarray there was and how many things hadn't been taken care of that should have been. He was always collecting things, but it got totally out of hand when uh, television sets were piling up in the living room that he either found in the street or that we had that broke and he couldn't bear to throw anything out. I know that I have, for instance, um, what I can see, you know. Um, this is plastic tubing that if somebody gave to me 20 years ago, I still haven't figured out a use for it, but it's decorative, it comes in two colors. These are screens for basement windows that are in the house. His, his solid connection to other people is by giving information. And that fits with him being a teacher and a collector of things, but that's kind of how he communicates. That's the level he shares information. Getting to know Jack is sharing information. It's not talking about what you like to do in your spare time. My collection is mostly stuff that could be used at some point in the future. The big question is, will it be used? He pack rats knowledge also. He is like, he, he knows a little bit about everything. The people who do this behavior aren't that much different than the rest of us with respect to their relationship to possessions. And the difference is that, that they apply some of these reasons to more things. They, they think perhaps a bit more about their possessions in a bit more complicated way about their possessions than the rest of us do. And so all of us ha have some kind of uh, empathy or feeling because we, we have a little bit of that in all of us. And it, because we, our lives are organized by things. We're reminded of, of special times in our life by things. I think the behavior itself is quite fascinating. The ways in which the reasoning and the reasons for saving is the same as it is for other people. It's just that the way in which those reasons are applied is different. I think people who have this problem are fascinating. I enjoy talking to them. They're, they're all different kinds of people, but yet there's some, there's some quality about them that makes them fascinating.
Hi everyone, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that uh, clip, the video. Um, it really kind of gets you going when you first see that video because there are some people that are not used to this and not used to seeing that kind of environment. Um, it can be very distressing for folks who are not used to seeing that. It's true. We're, we're in it. We're in the business, so it's, it's a little different for us. Um, how many clients are you working with presently? Um, I'm working with, where our program is working with 12 clients. Good. Very good. We opened up referrals um, just in the fall. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's myself and it's also a protective service worker. Wonderful. And we each work 20 hours, so it's a full time. But it's 12 clients uh, on board, that's great. Yep, we're working with 12 clients and then we're also working um, with some people who do have more insight mm -hmm. into their issue of hoarding. Oh, good. And so we meet with them not as regularly but once or twice a month instead of weekly. Great. Well, our agency is really fortunate because we have the mobile mental health team for folks who can't get out to a therapist so the therapist can go and see them, which is a wonderful thing for us also and for this type of client. That's great. Give, a, give us an example of one of your clients. Tell us about Joe. <laughs> sure, I'll tell you about Joe. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Joe came in, um, he's a senior mm -hmm. who lives in senior housing. Mm. Um, in Lynn, there is quite a bit of housing. Oh, yeah. um, quite a bit of hoarding. And, <laughs> and um, in housing, you do, um, hoarding comes to the surface a little bit more. We talked about before about, you know, why it's, what the definition of hoarding is, and, and part of it was that it's a problem for someone else. Sure. And so, um, management gets in management, that twist right. <laughs> really quickly because every year they have to have an inspection in the apartment. Right. And so it's, it's pretty common that a referral will come in from the housing authority mm -hmm. um, because they do have those checks in place. Mm. Um, they do have their annual inspections. Right. And if they know somebody is someone who hoards, then they might go in more than once a year. Oh, sure. So um, what about Joe? So How old is Joe? So Joe is 68 years old. Mm -hmm. and is he single? He's single. He's divorced. Divorced. Has two kids that he does not speak to. Surprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No surprise. I mean, with hoarding, it really, um, it does tend to break up relationships. Oh, sure. So because this wasn't something, it's just something that um, he struggled with his entire life. His entire life. Mm -hmm. So now he's living in housing, mm -hmm. and management went in and did their inspection. Yep. And what they did was they told him about the program here at Gliss. Good. So instead of um, pushing for an eviction, right, or um, you know making him so worried and overwhelmed that he could lose his housing, they presented to him that. Um, if he was willing to, you know, accept some help, sure. then um, then that would be part of the solution. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, and so um, what they do is we have a referral form mm -hmm. here at Gliss, and you fill out the referral yeah. form, and um, we review those those referrals. I want to review Joe. <laughs> I want to go back to Joe. Um, did Joe work in his lifetime? Joe did. What yep. kind of work He's did he do? He's an engineer. An engineer. Highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. He, um, you know, worked his entire life, supported his family, mm -hmm. um, but always collected things. Always collected. Always sees the use in things. Mm -hmm. And so for him, uh, if he sees a broken vacuum oh, on yeah. the street, He's what gonna, a waste that is. That is. He's going to take it home. And so he'll take it home and he'll... Um, have the intention of fixing it. Yeah. Um, the intention is good. The intention is good. But the follow through is difficult. Exactly, Marge. Right, so it just piles up in the so, corner. So, yeah, and so that vacuum at first was just one vacuum, mm -hmm. but then you add to that oh, another one, a computer, mm -hmm. 
um, anything you really can think of that you could fix, right. a toaster, mm -hmm. blender. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you think of just the intention, the intention was really good, but when that, all that adds up, that is hoarding. Mm -hmm. And that's what, um, what housing sees as, right, of course. as hoarding and a safety and, and fire hazard for the building. Is Joe able to sleep in his bed or is that engulfed with things also? He is able to sleep in his bed. That's amazing. Many people are not. That's right. But he is. That's right. Um, he cannot use his kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so that's an activity of daily living that he's not able can't cook, can't to, get in the, to use. Anything in the fridge? Can he get to the refrigerator? He can't. That's really become kind of a work area I see. for him. Does he ever try to fix anything or is it just in the thought? I, um, from meeting with him over the past few months, um, I think, yeah, he does. For every one thing, he works on, there's eight things. I was just, I was good. I wouldn't go in for 10. <laughs> but eight is good. Eight is a good yeah, number. I'm eight giving him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> right, right, right. Does he give away the fixed product or does he still keep that? He keeps it. He keeps it, yeah. Yeah. So he's on thin ice right at this time. He is. With management. He is. Yeah. And um, what we're working on mm -hmm. is just thinking about small steps that we can take. Right. So not that the whole house has to be immaculate. It wouldn't be anyways. That's never going to be the expectation. Be, right. Does he have a doctor? Does he see a medical doctor? He does see a medical Good. doctor. Good. Yeah, he's a veteran. Yeah. And, um, Is he willing to, to see a therapist on an ongoing? Not at this point. <coughs> no. No. Um, not but a that would be a, a very good mobile mental health referral. It would be, yeah. If we get there. If you get there. Yeah. S baby steps with that. Really, um, even three months into meeting with him, we're still developing our oh, relationship sure. and of course. Um, becoming that one person That's that. That's hard work. You know, that sees him for who he is yeah. and understands that this is extremely difficult for him. How do you handle seeing this all day? <laughs> Are you able to, when you go home at night, say, I have to leave it there? Yeah, I do. You, you do have to do that. I do. Um, when you're working in the field, um, you have to have a very good sense of humor. Oh, absolutely. About things. And you also have to know what you need. Right. I think. Very important. And so. Otherwise, you can't continue to do the job. No. So That's I definitely right. take a breather good. when I'm driving home. Yes. And of course. And go into the other part of my life. <laughs> yes, the good part. I think we're going to show some graphics. Is that coming on or is that going to be as we're speaking? It will come up on the screen. So people will get some good information about what to do and the resources that are in the community. Right. Um, I wanted to share some resources. Please. And um, what I have um, developed is a one-page um, questionnaire mm -hmm. and that's available for anyone really if you're a family member or a friend um, or someone who hoards yourself and have some insight into it you can call me at Greater Lynn Senior Services um, and request it and what it is is um, just a questionnaire to get you thinking one of the questions is do you have strong emotional attachments to many items mm. that make you feel comfortable or safe? Another one is, you save or collect things even though your home is full. Or you find value, uniqueness, mm. and sentiment in belongings that others do not find valuable, such as old papers, clothes that no longer fit, books. Right. Um, and this is just a starting point. It's a yes or no. You can ask yourself it. You don't have to f tell me your answers. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Do, do you get many self-referrals? I, I didn't think that was... Uh, I did not think we would yeah. either. But um, honestly, we have received um, quite a few self-referrals. Is it because of the housing issue? Is that a big issue behind making... A self-referral? Um, 
We did have one person self-refer 15 minutes before he knew the Board of Health was coming in oh, to do an sure. inspection. Yes, of course. <laughs> you smart know what? person. Yeah, that's what I said. Smart I said person. resourceful and smart. Oh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but um, honestly, self-referrals have been coming from homeowners more so than oh. housing. And um, an interesting thing a person I met with recently was she saw um, the article that um, that I was part of in the Lynn item. Right. And she read that and said, gosh, I don't want to be, you know, I'm 68 right now, I don't want to be in, in my 80s and have a fall from my, my hoarding. I want to work on it now and that's I better get going. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That she was able to do that. I have to give that person a lot of credit because that's, at least she's seeing something. Right, so it really is just varying levels it of sure insight, is. but I have been very um, surprised to, that we have had quite a few self referrals. Wow, that's amazing, amazing. And family members too. Oh, well the family members, I could understand that. Yeah. yeah. How frustrating is it for a family member? Let's give them some uh, thought. I mean, it just is so overwhelming for a family member. It is. It's just it's it's extremely frustrating um it's extremely frustrating because you want that person to be your mother or father right and they really they can't do it and a person who hoards um puts their belongings above everything of else sure and of so they can't really be a mother no, figure no. um in the extreme, yes. you know, the extreme cases right. of hoarding, compulsive hoarding. So, the family members always feel like they're second oh, sure. to the person's stuff, whatever we, that might I be. I think we need a support group now for family members. Yeah, um, there is a website, childrenofhoarders.org. Um, oh, good. And we're going to have that information up, up as on, well. Oh, good. And North Shore Elders, sorry, dot com. Childrenofhoarders.com. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, I see it. Yep. But North Shore Elder Services, um, all the ASAPs are doing something with hoarding, um, but a little different. So they have started a support group for family members. Mm -hmm. um, Just to interject what ASAP is, it's an aging services access point. That's actually what we are. We used to be called a home care corporation, but now we're ASAPs. I'm glad you said, you know. glad she said the definition, not me. Yeah, well that's a, <laughs> I should know it. If I don't, shame on me. <laughs> so, so, yes, at North Shore can, Elder Services, they have started. So if you are a family member yeah. and you want some support, right. um, contact um, North Shore Elder Services. They're meeting, I believe, the first and third Wednesday of every of month. Of every month. And yeah. is that, I'm just wondering, are they going to be able to get that information? Good. Okay, so we are. We're going to have that information yeah. up there. That's great. Good. And here at GLIS too, we're planning on starting um, a clutter support group as well Good. later this year, um, and that w is for more the self referral types. So uh -huh. for people who Good. do have more insight, wonderful, and could use some peer support. Right, which would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. To have a group with the, the same basic. Yeah, well that's what, I mean, you feel like, if you feel like you're alone in anything, you know, if you feel like you're alone, exactly. it's hard to get out of a situation. Right. And so um, once you meet other people um, who are struggling mm -hmm. with clutter in material items and in body and mind, right. <laughs> then um, then it, it is, it, it, it's some understanding and some... Uh, how are the, the managers in the housing, how are they taking to this? Are they pretty receptive to, to yeah. us being involved? Yeah, I think um, there is definitely some edu more education. Good. And that's part of my role here at GLIS mm -hmm. is to do the outreach piece. And if you can block the eviction, that's right. that's a big. No piece. one wants to go through an eviction. No, of course not, because what's the alternative? And for housing too, they don't want to see exactly. people evicted. Exactly. And so we're offering them a resource if 
if the residents are willing to work with That's me. That's the whole key, but I would think when they hear the word eviction, do they become a little more receptive? Yeah, that, um, it's not a bad thing, um, I've found. If your housing manager does say, doesn't just look the other way, and they do say, right. you know, something has to, to be, be done oh, about sure. this. Because it offers um, a motivation, a kick, I it usually really, call oh it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And it gets us started. Whatever it takes. And yeah. that's a big motivation. It is a big is motivation. To lose your housing is, a, is, especially when you think of the, the kind of weather we're having right now, I mean, I mean, where do you go? I mean, you could go to a rooming house if you have enough money, be, but that's, they're kind of expensive yeah. to go to a rooming house. And the shelter, if there's room, or the street. And then you don't have a say in what happens to your stuff. Exactly. Like all this stuff that's so important to you right. is going to be thrown away. Oh, sure. And so it's better to, for you to have some control sure. in the process. And work with us. And work with right. us um, so that you do have a say in exactly. what you know, gets donated or saved or passed on to a family member. Right. Right. Well, I'll tell you, we've had a great conversation today. Thank you, Lori. Thanks. It was nice. good to talk about it, and I hope we have many clients with you. That's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for people in the community. Thank you all. See you again. Keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs>